Hello everyone and welcome to Learning Curve Acres. Just wanted to give you a quick update on some of the things that are happening around here. I have to admit I've been MIA the last couple weeks. I had quite a severe sinusitis infection which then led to laryngitis. So talking really wasn't an option. Um, I was barely even squeaking at some points so <clears throat> videos just would not have worked. <clears throat> Anyways, I just wanted to show you some of the plants that I've been moving outside. I've brought out some of my cabbage and my Swiss chard, the mystery pepper there, along with my jalapenos. Now, my jalapenos have never looked so sad and pathetic in all the years I've grown them. I don't know if it's my grow setup that I have in the basement uh, with the lights and everything or if it's just that my basement's too damp or too I don't know but I <clears throat> I really have not had what I would call a success with this whole idea of putting in grow lights and the LED lights so that I can have have plants started earlier they're just really looking sad and I don't know if you can see at the base of this one pepper here but there's a I've got mold happening and same with on that one and I've never had mold in my plants before this tomato I don't know if it'll show up but there's mold on top of the soil there and my tomato leaves have been doing this crazy thing where they're kind of curling and going all gnarly and nasty and bumpy and I've never had that happen before. So <clears throat> the only thing that I've done differently was I put everything in the in the basement with those lights. So well that's why we call it learning curve acres, right? Because everything's a learning curve and we don't know if we like the way something's gonna work until we try it. But based on how things have gone this year I don't know if I'll really do this again next year. Um, I don't know if it's for me. I've had much better success just having everything in my window. Um, I have a beautiful large west window that gets lots of sun for the whole afternoon and that's where I seem to have my best success. That and moving everything out outside as, as soon as I can. But I did go to the garden center, you can see some tags there, and I did pick up a purple creeping thyme, an ever-bearing strawberry that actually has pink petals when it's in bloom. Unfortunately, all the petals have fallen off that one flower there. And then I picked up some zucchini, because for whatever reason, I cannot start zucchini seeds. My cucumbers come up, my cucumelons come up, my uh, pumpkins come up, but my zucchini seeds always manage to just rot in the ground. So <clears throat> I have to say I'm not too happy, so I had to just go and buy, I had to give in and buy them. But that's okay, it saved me some, some time and effort. But I've brought my sage out and my tomato those are the blue bosque down there. Um, I do still have a lot inside that has to come out. But that'll be, you know, that's going to take a lot of work. This has just been, this has been, well, several trips over two days that I've been slowly bringing them out. And tomorrow night, given the uh, fact that we're supposed to have some fairly low temperatures again, I'll probably have to bring these all inside for overnight. But for now, I've got them protected. They've got this great big piece of white corrugated plastic. And then they're in this, this box, which keeps these guys from jumping in and eating them all. Because that's exactly what they want to do. Because they see all the yummy, fresh, green, and they think that it's a salad bar just for them.
this time of year we still have uh, the potential risk of frost in the evenings and the last couple nights we've had some really low temperatures so I just thought I'd show you how I keep my plants from dying and it seems to be working fairly well um, so I'll just grab a couple things just two seconds So there's my arsenal, or a big part of it. So I'm, I start by taking old dog food bags, and I just place them, pardon me, along the edges where we seem to get the most wind. This helps keep a lot of the, it helps with keeping a lot of the, um, the, the natural warmth from the, from the plants in. I also, as you just saw there, I was watering them. Not only did they need a water, but they, the evaporation of the water as it's ev slowly evaporating over the evening, it does produce heat, which prevents a lot of frost. So once I've got the bags down, down along the edge, I'm going to just very lightly use the old feed bags just to place just to place over top of everything. And I do this because again it's going to help trap some of that warmth that the plants do produce by themselves. It helps cap keep it captured in there around the plants themselves. If you don't have feed bags uh, some lightly crumpled newspaper would work as well. Just whatever's going to help trap some air in here. So now I'm going to get my husband to help me put, pick this up and put it on top. And we're going to actually turn it this way. And now I've got some tarp, uh, two tarps to go on top. <coughs> and you'll see why I have it sitting like this. All right. So I was very careful when folding this this morning to try and make sure that I'd be able to get this unfolded easily. doesn't quite fit all the way down to the ground on all four sides. So that's why I just have this blue tarp just from the dollar store over on this side here. And then I have a couple of old boards that I just place up on top. And you saw Jason just sort of uh, folding these in, I actually have a string from a bale of bale of hay, and I'm going to just loop that through one of the eyes here. I have it already looped on that side, and then just give it a knot. That helps just hold everything in, and helps keep everything fairly warm in there. So that's how I try to prevent frostbite on my plants at this this time of year. It's May the 11th right now, so <coughs> we're still at risk for frost for another two weeks. So I won't be putting these too far away until we've got everything good and we've got temperatures that are always above 10 degrees at night. Well. I hope you this helps you a little bit and please don't forget forget to give it a thumbs up like subscribe share if you know someone that might be able to learn a little something or you think this might help them all right you take care and happy gardening